Praise the living God. Amen. Amen. Praise the living God. Amen. Amen. Brethren, I stand in the stead of Jesus to announce to you that today is the fifth Sunday in Lent. Assuming that we have received our call to worship, which is the book of Psalm 43, and our Old Testament reading in the book of Genesis chapter 22, reading from line 1 on to 14, and episode reading in the book of Hebrews chapter 9, verse 11 to 15. <clears throat> I would like to introduce my team to you this morning, which says, children of this sinful world. In the vein of this, we are now going to have our gospel reading. In respect of this, I now ask you all to stand up and give respect to this reading. Our gospel reading is coming from the book of St. John chapter 8, reading from line 42 to 46. If you have your Bible, you read with me. And I'm reading from the Lutheran Study Bible. The reading goes. Jesus said to them, If you were my father, you would have loved me. If God, sorry, if God were your father, you would have loved me. For I came from God and I am there. I came not of my own accord, but he sent me. Why do you, do you not understand what I say? It is because you cannot bear to hear my word. If you are, if you are of your father, the devil, and your will is to do your father's desires, he was a murderer from the beginning and has nothing to do with the truth. Because there is, no, there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks out of his own character. For he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I tell you the truth, you do not believe me. Thus end our reading. Thanks be to God. God. Be seated. <laughs> From this reading, brethren, let us now remember the world we are living today was made perfect according to the will of God. After the creation of every visible thing we see today, God in his pleasure and magnitude love for mankind made man in his own image and likeness to have dominion over all the other creatures. Added to that, he gave man a helper who was taken out of man's rib, later called her woman, meaning from man she was taken. Despite the power being given to man, Satan in his craftiness cunningly induced man to sin through the woman called he. So sin entered this world through one man by the persuasive words of the devil when he asked the woman, I quote, Did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree in the garden? <coughs> Unquote. Genesis chapter 3, verse 1. The woman answered, I quote, We may eat of the fruit of the trees. In the garden, but God said, You shall not eat of the tree in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch, lest you die. Genesis chapter 3, reading from line 1 to 2. Yet the devil succeeded. So from thence, the world, the world has become a sinful place for mankind. Therefore, even today, or even during the era of Jesus Christ, according to this reading, the book of St. John chapter 8, verse 42 to 46, things like darkness, slavery to sin, 
fleshy desires, unbeliefs, spiritual blindness, uncleanliness, command to love the world, hatred, etc., were the order of the day. And even today, you and I, we are part and parcel of these activities. Remember, sin entered the world through one man. From thence, everybody become a sinner. In this vein, the Jewish people, being the very descendant of Abraham, said to Jesus that they are not born of sexual immorality, but they have a father who is God. In response to this statement, Jesus told them that if, you, if, if God were your father, you would have loved me, for I came from God. Yet the people did not understand because of the darkness, worldly desire, than the desire for the things of God. So that, so that made them to be the children of the devil. So their desire is to do the will of their father who is Satan. <clears throat> because he was a murderer from the beginning of the world, but has nothing to do with the truth, because the truth is not in him. But a complete liar, despite all this rebellious attitude, God in his abundant love for you and I freely offer his one and only son, an only begotten son, for the remission of our sins. <coughs> a man who has not been convicted of any sin, or a man without blemish, a perfect righteous being, was crucified in our stead when we were yet sinners. In, a, in another words, Christ's coat of righteousness was removed from him and put on us. Then our coat of unrighteousness was put on him to carry, which is also known as imputation. That is, he suffered in our stead to crown it all. The book of Hebrews chapter 9, reading from verse 11 on to 15 says, Redemption through the blood of Jesus Christ. He offered himself without blemish to God. Purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. He is the mediator of the new covenant so that you and I who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance in Jesus' name. Amen. Brethren, receive this benediction from God. May the face of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ shine upon you this day in this length of season and depart with the peace of Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with God our Father now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you.